we are in a place on the map called WordGate Part 3. When we were in WordGate Part 1 and Part 2, on this journey mapped out by Lord God Jesus, we saw that the Lord gives those ears to hear and eyes to see. But to see or hear what? Well, it's the Word of God. We need ears to hear the Word of God, and we need eyes to see the Word of God. So we're going to see how this takes place by entering the gate. So we're going to start off in the book of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 39. Truly, truly, again, there's that double. I tell you, I lay it to rest to you Pharisees. Anyone who does not enter by or all the way fully through the gate into the fold, and this word fold also means courtyard. So remember that. The courtyard of the sheep, but climbs up in by some other way or from another place is a thief. And this word thief means by nighttime in secret and a robber. And this word robber is referring to it's open, it's violence during the day. Two, the one who enters by or through all the way through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to or they hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name. Remember that word name as the manifestation, the revelation of a character of somebody. So he calls his own sheep by their name, their very own revelation of who they are, and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on. And this word goes is a journey. It's a transporting something from one destination to another. He goes on, he journeys on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because they know. And this is to see physically, which bridges to the mental and then into the spiritual, because they know all the way down to the spiritual, his voice. So they see it first, and then they spiritually know it, his voice. Five, but they will never follow a stranger, but they will run, they will flee away from him, because they do not recognize. And this word recognize means to see something physically, again, and it bridges mentally into the spiritually, a stranger's voice. Jesus uses this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand. That means to know through a personal experience. They did not personally know or understand what he was telling them. 7. Therefore, Jesus said again, Truly, truly, I tell you, I lay it to rest. I, I am, there's the great I am, the gate. I, I am the gate of the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep are have not listened to, or they've not heard them. I, I am the gate. And see, he says this again, another double time. I, I am the gate. He says this twice. It's not going anywhere. There is no other way. He is the only way. Remember, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So nine, I, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will enter in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. To steal what? The word of God. And to kill? The relationship to follow Christ. And destroy? Destroy your inheritance as a son or daughter of the Most High. I have come that they may have life, possess life, and have it or possess it, abundantly, not just in this life, but also in the age to come. 11. I, I am the good shepherd. In this word good, it means to be attractively good that inspires others to embrace what is lovely. It's praiseworthy. It's well done. So I, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down. In other words, he sets, he fixes, he establishes his life. And this word life means a breath or soul. So Jesus is saying, I, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down, he establishes, he fixes his life, his soul, his breath for the sheep. Remember, Jesus is the cornerstone and he sets that down. And all that come to follow him after are set upon him like a temple. Okay, we're the body of Christ. 
and he's building it. He's the cornerstone. He's the foundation. He's building it upwards, and it's all his. 12. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons this sheep and runs or flees. Then the wolf attacks or snatches and scatters them because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. 14. I, I am the good shepherd. And again, Jesus says this a second time. It's established. It's done. There is no other shepherd. There is no one else to follow. There is no one else to go to, to enter, nor to follow, but Christ himself. So 14, I, I am the good shepherd. I know, and this is through a personal experience, my sheep, and my sheep know through the personal experience, me, just as the father knows through personal experience, me, and I know through personal experience, the father, and I lay down, I establish it, my soul, my breath my life, for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this pen or this courtyard, remember. Think of the tabernacle. Think of the temple. I must bring or lead them also. They will listen to or hear my voice. And there shall be or become one flock with one shepherd. And there's the become because it hasn't become yet. Because the Jews and the Gentiles... We're in the age of the Gentiles now. And once that comes into fulfillment, then the Jews will be crafted back in and we'll become one with our shepherd. 17. Because of this, my father loves me because I lay down, establish my life, the breath, the soul, that for the purpose to take it up again. 18. No one raises it away from me, but I lay it down away from myself. I have authority to lay it down and authority to receive it again. This command I received from or close beside my father. 19. Division again, therefore, became among the Jews on account or all the way through the words of these. So in other words, the Jews who had heard these words were again divided. But if we look deeper into that, division. Remember Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace but to divide. The word of God, remember in the beginning in Genesis, let there be light. He divided the dark from the light. There's always this division. He is constantly going to be dividing this to the very end because evil cannot enter his kingdom. So there's division here again with the Jews. What is he dividing? Good and evil. So division again there was or became among the Jews on account, meaning all the way through the words, these, what words? Jesus's words. Jesus is speaking these words and Jesus's words divide. He's a double-edged sword. 20. Many of them said, he is demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, these are not the sayings. And this word sayings is the rhema word. It's a spoken word. I call it the active. It's the living word of God. So these are not the sayings, the active words of a man possessed by a demon. Not a demon is able to open the eyes of the blind. So not a demon is able to open. This word open means upward. Well, what's with upward? Remember King Nebuchadnezzar. When he was turned to beast, It wasn't till he looked up, upward, that he was restored back. So there's this division. One doesn't see it, and the other does. And they say not a demon is able to open upward the eyes. This word eyes is your eye or your mind of your eye of the blind, physically or mentally. This is opening up the eyes. 22. Then became the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews were there gathered around him, saying, Until when the soul, the breath of us, you take or raise or lift up, if you are the Messiah, the Christ, 
Tell us plainly. Tell us openly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works, meaning the task or the employment that I do or I make or construct, in my Father's name, remember that manifestation, the character of God, testify, meaning they witness about me, Jesus says. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. 27. My sheep listen to or hear my voice. I know through personal experience them, and they follow me. I'm going to pause there for a second, and we're going to look at this. All that we've already talked about, about Jesus being the gate, being the shepherd, and following him. So we need to look at the tabernacle. If you look at the tabernacle, there was only one way in. and It was the gate or the door. And Jesus is saying, I am that gate and that door in which you enter. There is no other way. Anybody who tries to climb over is a thief and robber. He is the only way. So if we enter in through him, we see that there's a shepherd. And Jesus says, I am the shepherd. Well, what does the shepherd do? It leads. So he's leading. And we're to follow him. And the very first thing we come to in the tabernacle is the brazen altar. What goes on the brazen altar? The sacrifice. Well, Jesus is the lamb slain since the foundation of the world. So he's there. But you're to follow him. You too are to die to yourself. Throw off that dead man and walk in the new man. So you do likewise. Then we come to the laver. The laver is there where they washed and cleaned. The Lord is our living water. We're to wash in him. Jesus says, my words wash, they make you clean. So there we are washed clean. And this is all happening in the outer court. Remember the pen, the sheep pen, the outer court? That's where we're at. But you're not done. You still have a journey to go through. So then we get to the door. There's a door to the inner court or the holy place. And there, Jesus wants to do something. He wants to anoint you. He wants to baptize you in the spirit. He wants to give you bread to eat. The Lord says, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We have bread there to eat, and it abides in us, and we in him. And then we also have praise and worship and prayer unto him, that we are to be fellowshipping with him. And this all is happening in front of the Holy of Holies. But there's a veil. But good news, that veil's been torn. When Jesus was on the cross, the veil was torn in two. Remember, it was rent in two. So there's no longer a separation. So now we stand there in the holy place, and there in front of us is the Holy of Holies. We are in a sanctification process. He wants to separate you, sanctify you, strip you of all your sin, and make you presentable. Presentable to what? The Ark of the Covenant. That's God's presence. But didn't you know that during the time when Jesus was here with the temple, there was no more Ark? It was gone. It's not needed anymore. Jesus is our Ark of our Covenant. He is our covenant. And there, his blood is on the ark. He's on the mercy seat. So whenever you hear the word, you have to hear the word of God. And when you hear it, you enter in by the gate. But you're not done. You have to see the word of God now. And the reason why you need to see is because you need to follow. You need to follow him all the way to the Holy of Holies. So you're prepared as a bride, ready to stand face to face with him. As soon as you enter, you're not ready. He wants to take you somewhere to prepare you. So now that we have a better understanding of that, we're going to continue on now. So I was at verse 27. My sheep listen to or hear my voice. I know them through personal experience, Jesus says, and they follow me. 28. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish or be fully cut off into the age. Cut off from what? kingdom. No one will snatch them out of my hand. This word hand means an instrument a person uses to accomplish their purpose or their plan. Remember, you were preordained since the foundation of the world. Good works unto him, and he is faithful to finish it in you. 29. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of the Father's hand. The Father's purpose. There's not two hands here. There's one hand. 
Do you see this? I and the Father, we are one. 31. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good, remember that praiseworthy, well done, works, tasks, or employments from out of the Father, from which these, meaning these works or tasks or employments, do you stone me? 33. We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, make you construct yourself to be God. 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I have said you are God's. So remember, those who believe Moses believe Jesus because Moses wrote all about Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the word of God. All the words spoken are him. So if the Lord is quoting law, he quotes himself. He's saying, I have said you are are gods. And this does not refer to God's meaning himself. This is not referring to Lucifer who wanted the throne of God, so to speak. But this is underneath the Lord, rulers underneath him. 35. If he, so this is Jesus speaking again, if he referring back to God, referring back to himself, called them gods, to whom, meaning to these gods, the word of God came. Remember, the word of God became, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Okay, so let me reread that. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I have said, you are God's. If he, referring to himself, called them God's, to whom, meaning to these gods, to you, to people, the word of God came, the word of God, Jesus came to his people. And scripture cannot be broken, released, cannot be just set aside. Whom the Father set apart or sanctified. Okay, what is he setting apart or sanctifying? He's setting apart or sanctifying the scripture. Who's the scripture? Jesus. He's the word of God. To whom the Father set apart, he sanctified, he made holy. This is Jesus. This is the word of God. And sent into the world. The Father sent the Son into the world. You do accuse me or lay it to rest of blasphemy. Because I said, I am God's Son. This is Jesus speaking. Or the Son of God. So in other words, Jesus is saying, If I, God, made you people in my image, and I am God, And have come to redeem you and rescue you to bring you back as sons and daughters of God. Then that which you have come from, you are. So if I am God, the head, you are God's, the body, underneath. Do not mistake in this. Do not mistake in this like Lucifer. We are the body of Christ. So Jesus is saying, if I said all this, Why do you want to stone me? I am a man like you, in which I called a God. So why do you stone me for such a thing? 37. If I do not do, means to make or construct the works, the task or the employment of my father, do not believe me. But if I do do them, construct them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, the task or the employment that you may know through a personal experience and understand through a personal experience that the Father is in. And this word in means to be within, operates from within inside me. So Jesus is saying the Father operates inside me and I in or operate within the Father. Again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped through their grasp. In other words, he went forth out of the hand or the purpose of them. So we see now the Lord has taken us in a place through a gate, following a shepherd, sanctifying us through his word, through his baptism of his spirit, correcting us, or he says those he loves he corrects. It's a process we go through. You should not be the same the day you entered the gate as time goes on. If it's been 10 years, as an example here, 
since you've entered the gate, you surely should not be in the same spot, the same person, ten years later. You should have been following him, being sanctified, being cleansed, purified, made holy. He's going to complete that work to the day you stand face to face with him. But you have to operate with him. You have to cooperate with him. And you even see this at the end here where he he calls you like his own, a son or daughter, a God. And again, do not be mistaken. These are serious things of the Lord and do not take them lightly. We follow with whole heart and mind in his word. So may you have ears to hear the word of God. May you have eyes to see the word of God and enter in and be faithful, a good and faithful servant and follow him all the way through. Because not only does he want to purify, make you holy and ready as a bride, but during that process, he has a will and a purpose for you. And that is part of how he does it. He has a work for you. Just as Jesus had work, so do you. You're not greater than he. So you too have a work. Do not think we are not looked at for our deeds and our works. And if you do, you're mistaken. It is vital. It is very important to the Lord. For our works do not earn us forgiveness. For it is by his blood we enter in and we are forgiven and we're cleansed. But after that, he expects you to follow. And in that following process, that sanctification process, there are works. And he's going to look at you and see whether you are faithful unto him or not through that. Because if you keep in the will of God and the purpose and the works of him that he's preordained for you, that's not only good and acceptable, but perfect unto you, it's going to keep you out of sin. It's going to keep you clean before him. As soon as you start veering away from what he's called you to do, the temptations grow and the likelihood of you falling back into sin is great. So we're going to stop there now on the word gate, part three. And next time, we will be in Word Gate Part 4.